everybody uh, has a bigger like a so let's last, see. Like, oh, it is, it is recording. And uh, so um, let's yeah, go ahead and, and um, uh, Denise, if you make sure that everyone's I, muted except for Joanne. And uh, Joanne, you've been asked, okay. And uh, so just give me a second here. Um, Joanne, what I will do is, is uh, need to share the screen. Give me one second. And coming up. Joanne, are you able to, to read what's on the uh, on the screen? Yes, I am. All right. So, um, okay, go ahead and, and uh, let's begin the prayer. Lord, we come this day to worship and thank you for the many ways you guide our lives. We ask that our hearts, our ears, and our spirits be open to your healing words of love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, um, let's, uh, we come to our welcome time. And uh, Denise, let's go ahead and unmute everyone. So everyone, uh, your screens are, you are being asked to be unmuted. And this is just kind of our way to just have uh, organized chaos so that we can all say hello. So everyone unmute your screens and say hello to everybody. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, glad to see everyone here this morning, and and uh, I'm glad that you're enjoying a, a beautiful day. And um, I hope everyone gets out their galoshes, um, a, because it's going to snow. Snow, my my poor garden. So I I'm. <laughs> Not uh, not looking forward to it, and I don't think I have enough blankets to cover everything up. And uh, darn it, darn it, darn it. So, uh, so one of the things that we're going to be talking about later in the message is the title of my sermon today is "This is not what I ordered." I believe me, I did not order the snow. So just want to let you know on that. Uh, so okay, Denise, go. Let's go ahead and, and mute everyone back up here, and. We, uh, uh, we come to our uh, prayer time, and uh, let's, uh, we come to our prayer time. Um, today, I'm not going to read the list of the prayers. Uh, we sent that out in the newsletter this week, and so it is as of current, as of the printing, uh, which was on Wednesday. And so uh, you do have that uh, prayer list available for you uh, that you'll be, you'll be seeing, and we ask that uh, throughout your prayers, not only today, but also throughout the week that you use that. Um, the only thing to add, uh, I mentioned this earlier, but uh, Kathy Yost had, had uh, given an update on her sister. Um, you'll see in the prayer list that she, her sister uh, was di uh, diagnosed with, with a positive case of COVID-19, and it was really touch and go. Uh, uh, Kathy was um, was really sure that she was not going to make it. And uh, as we find with this virus, she took a turn for the better, and, and she is doing so much better. Um, should be uh, getting home um, soon. Uh, and uh, uh, Kathy and Bruce just asked for travel mercies because they're going to be traveling a lot uh, to uh, uh, Lincoln and Beatrice down there as, as her sister and brother kind of helped take care of her sister. So uh, that was an update. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I think that was the only one that was mentioned uh, at the at the first service here this morning. So, just checking uh, my phone to see if there's any additional prayers. Or uh, certainly, please use the chat function uh, if you have any uh, prayers or birthdays. In fact, prayers, birthdays, anniversary. So, uh, we have the the chat function is available for you as well to kind of share updates. Any other celebrations? Um, 
we certainly get those lifted up if they come in. Uh, just want to remind you that today is Communion Sunday. And so um, we invite you to uh, have your own bread and your own juice uh, available. And we will be sharing communion here. I want to remind you of that. That's going to be uh, going on here today. Um, so we come now for our children's time. And let me see here. Uh, for the kids, um, one of the things, as I, as I talked about, uh, today's message is called, um, this is not what I ordered. So today, I got one of these. You know how long it's been since I ordered a Happy Meal? Wow, a long time. So I'm really excited to see what's in here. We got uh, um, some kind of horned dinosaur thing. Not quite sure what that is, but I'm sure that'll be fun. Um, got the cutest little french fries, but they're empty. Um, uh, this is not what I ordered. This is definitely not what I ordered. Uh, I mean, there should be food in here. Um, but... One of the things that we're going to be talking about today is there is something else in here. There's money. So I, I ordered food and I didn't get it, but instead I got money. And so one of the things I'm going to be talking with the grown-ups about is sometimes that happens to us. We order something and we don't get it, but we often, so often miss the blessings around us. And uh, I could use this money to buy a new Happy Meal and then insist that I actually have food in it. So I'm going to have to do that next time. All right. So, uh, uh, and I will tell you, we had uh, uh, we had one, we had someone at the children's sermon at the nine o'clock service actually got some money because she came all the way up. So I'm going to mention that. All right. So, um, you know, to, in the chat, Chat function, uh, uh, Bev is looking for uh, readers for the Zoom service to read on scripture on both September 20th and September 27th. Certainly can send her a direct message um, or get a hold of Bev. And I know that uh, we really appreciate your help on that. So uh, that's going to be, uh, uh, please let her know if you are available on either of those Sundays. All right. So now we come to our prayer time. And um, so uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, Jan Kriha, uh, let's go ahead and unmute her, mute her screen. Give me a second here as I share. Jan, are you able to read what's on the screen? Yeah, I have it on my phone too, so okay. I'll read it off my phone. Okay, all right, uh, let us go ahead and, and pray. Okay. Merciful Lord, we like to think that we do everything well. We pat ourselves on the back when we act with love and mercy towards others, complimenting ourselves in self-righteousness. But you know us better. You know our faults and our, our failings. You know when we falsely proclaim that we are truly living as you would have us live. Teach us again about your forgiving and healing love. Show us ways of merciful living that we may extend the love and mercy you have given us to others. Forgive us, we pray, for we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us have a moment of short silence. My dear Lord, there is uh, a lot that uh, has happened to us. Um, it's been a long week as we uh, look for the, the turn in the weather here this week. We uh, begin to realize that there is so much that uh, we, can, we did not order. There is so much that we cannot control. I just ask, gracious God, that as we gather in this time of worship here today, remind us of those blessings. You remind us of those ways that you've just surrounded us with your love. You have this technology that's before us. Sometimes it doesn't always work right, but uh, we continue to get better. Zoom gets better. 
Uh, we're always looking for ways to just improve our lives and, and certainly to, to keep us at a point where we feel safe and comfortable. Thank you for these. And thank you for folks that we pray for. Uh, our list is great. And there, we know that there is more uh, to be lifted up into your, your hands. I just ask that you be with us now as we pray with you together. Our, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass us. And lead us not to temptation, but us from evil. That is the kingdom and the power. Glory for her. All right. Now we uh, have some special music that we're going to have now. And uh, so what, uh, what I'm going to do is, is share the screen. This is a, uh, uh, the other day, uh, Lindsay uh, taped uh from the Clavinova, and um, one second while I pull up that. Special music. Thank uh, uh, Lindsay for that special music that we have here this morning. All right. Um, second here, kind of get things ready. One night, a, uh, a poor farmer was awakened by an angel. And uh, the angel said, God wants to bless you. Uh, and and all you need to do is make three requests of God and you will be blessed. There's a condition. Whatever you ask for, your neighbor will receive twice the blessing. But with that, the, the farmer woke up and decided to put the angel on the test. And he said, I wish for a herd of a thousand cattle. And no one sooner had he said that, but he heard the sound of animal noises coming outside the house. And, and so they went out and on the front lawn was a thousand magnificent cattle. Farmer could believe his blessing, and he, he walked around. He barely uh, could find his feet on the on the ground until the third day, when he was on a hill behind the house, looked scouting places for uh, a new barn. He looked across, and he noticed his neighbor had two thousand magnificent. 
And with that, the joy evaporated. He's got a scowl on his face. Um, he was kind of in a foul mood and really refused to eat. He went to just bed in an absolute rain. Couldn't sleep. But as he sat there, he remembered that uh, the angel said that he had two more blessings. And with that, joy returned. And he realized that he needed to secure his legacy. And with that, he needed to sleep. They pray, God, if it pleases you, give me a child. It wasn't long after that prayer when his wife said that she was pregnant. And over the next few months, he had nothing but unbelief. So one day, he was at coffee. And he overheard his neighbor say that his wife, and not only was it their first child, she was pregnant. Well, that sent that farmer into a different mood. And instead of being joyful, he was filled with jealousy. And this time, those dark emotions didn't go away. He couldn't focus on the birth of his newborn. And that night, he made his final request of the angel. He said, Lord, please gouge out my right eye. With that, the angel appeared and said, God is weak. Um, all three of my daughters are employed in the food industry. When I was in college, I was also working in the food industry. So all four of us, uh, and any of you that have ever worked with food, have heard this phrase, this is not what I ordered. Uh, in, in fact, we don't have to work in that industry. Uh, you've probably uttered it yourself. You've probably heard it from the table next door. Um, you don't even need to be in the restaurant business. I uh, probably heard it at the checkout counter at Menards or at the furniture store or when you got your cable hooked up or even when you open that package from Amazon. This is not what I ordered. So let's take a, a, a step back. How many of us, just raise your hand or, or put up a, a, a reaction here, have we ever uttered that phrase? Get the medical results. Say, hey, this is not what I ordered. Um, when I was in Lincoln, I was an intern for a church that had quadruplet boys in our junior high youth group. Their dad was our dentist. And uh, I remember he told us that they, always, they thought they were uh, going to have triplets. I guess the, the fourth one was always hiding behind, somewhere in the ultrasound. And so they put the plans together. They, uh, they had three sets of diapers, uh, three car seats, three cribs. I mean, you name it. You think his wife uttered something like, hey, this is what I ordered when she found out that that fourth child was coming in the womb. How many of us, when we were thinking of the year 2020, <laughs> we've been saying, hey, this is not what I ordered. I mean, this was supposed to be the year. This was supposed to be our year. Uh, 50th wedding anniversary party. Um, I was supposed to go on a cruise. Uh, my wife and daughter were supposed to visit Emma in Europe. Uh, this week, I performed a gravesite service. That woman was not supposed to die. That woman was not supposed to die. That's not what the family were. Disappointment, anger, resentment, bitterness, Jealousy, envy, have I pretty much summed up the year for you? Have, have I put a stamp on this sermon series? Uh, have I primed the pump for today's passage? Yeah. Now, before we ask Roger to, to read our scripture passage, I, I want to remind you, this is the, uh, this is the last incessantly waiting sermon. Uh, this passage of the 40 year, this is the last passage in the 40 year journey of the Hebrew. So now we're ready. Now is the time for the promise. So, okay, Roger, let's go ahead and, and unmute Roger's uh, screen. And give me a second here, Roger, to pull up our passage. Roger, can you read what's on the screen? Yes. Okay, go ahead and read it for us. This is uh, Deuteronomy verses, chapter 34, verses 1 through 12. 
Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, all of Nephtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the Western Sea, the Negev and the plain, that is, the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zor, the Lord said to him, this is the land of which I will swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. Let, let's pause right there. And, and Moses dies. Uh, okay, um, Roger, keep reading. Valley. It, he was buried in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Piro, but no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired and his vigor was not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him, and the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there been a right, has there arose a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequaled for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land, and for all the mighty deeds and for all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. Um, before we uh, mute Roger's screen, Roger, I'm going to have you uh, read verse 5 for us again. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, at the Lord's command. All right. Thank you, Roger. You know what I hear? This is not what I ordered. Uh, you know what I've been thinking about is Moses. Uh, for 40 years, he endured threats on his life, uh, the fights and riots of the people, uh, the feeling of, of abandonment and discouragement, people not listening to him, people not on the same page. He's there, he's so close to his tree. I mean, I mean, he can see it. He can smell the trees in the valley of the promised land. He, he can feel the breeze wa washing over his face uh, from the, from the, land, from the, uh, the, the seas and, and the water in the promised land. And then he dies. He doesn't get what he wants. There's a story about an air, Army Airborne Ranger who was learning to parachute. And so the, he's listening very intently to the sergeant barking out the orders. Uh, jump when I tell you to jump, said the sergeant. And number two, count to 10 and then pull the ripcord. And number three, if, if the first chute doesn't open, pull the second ripcord. And number four, when you land, the truck will take you back to the so As the plane was over the landing zone, the soldier jumped. He was told to jump. He counted to 10, pulled the ripcord, nothing. He pulled the second rip, nothing. And then the parachuter said to himself, oh, great. I'll bet the truck won't be there when I'm waiting for me as, as well. I'll bet the truck won't be there waiting for me as well. That guy did not get what he wanted. So let's go back to the Hebrews. For almost six months now, um, or 40 years of scripture, we've been focusing on the promised land. It is what has kept everyone going. We've had hunger pains, threat of violence, and learning new rules. What kept everyone going was this end, the, the promise, this end. Uh, when the journey seemed to linger, we were incessantly waiting. What kept us going was the promise. And when we longed for something else, 
what pointed us in the right direction was the promise that things were now for half of this congregation you, you all know something simple you were guided by the sense that your work week would come to an end with this magical day called retirement and another half of but those of you that have had children um, for nine months, you knew things would end with this pregnancy. This is what kept you going through morning sickness and strange smells and constant running to the restroom. Our journey has kept us going with this idea that one day, someday soon, the promised land will be Well, that day is now before us with a real shock. Moses, our leader, our, our mainstay, the one who kept us on task, the one who would not allow us to lose vision. The one would not be entering the promised land. Now, I'll tell you, that just doesn't feel good. Uh, let's uh, shift directions. Once a month, I get on a Zoom call with some pastors and colleagues from Colorado. We actually would see each other before the pandemic, but uh, now it's just by Zoom. And on a recent call, we were talking about calendar. And we were talking about how we're using erasers and crossing things out and white out in all of these events. That we have. And uh, one of the colleagues said that she has intentionally bought a new calendar, 2020, so that she could keep all of those events uh, in her calendar of what was supposed to happen. And her goal, she said, was that she would return to remember just how disruptive 2020 has been. Well, I keep my calendar on the computer, and, uh, and I'll tell you, it's really easy to delete things. And, but there are some things that I've decided to actually keep in my calendar. And uh, you can't quite see that on the screen, but I actually have my phone synced with my computer. And so I'm going to pull this up so that you can see. Do you write there where it says, what does it say? It says Purdue. Those of you that are diehard Husker fans know this was supposed to be the start of the football. So let's see a show of hands. How many of you, when you saw Army against Middle Tennessee State, thinking, hey, that's not what we ordered? Uh, or why can't we be like them? Now, I realize that not everyone here is a Husker fan, but we are on the internet more than ever. And so that means that we're watching church services uh, and we're noticing what others are doing. And we're saying to ourselves, hey, why can't we do that? I like sitting in a restaurant and you get our food and it's not what we ordered. And we look over at the next table and say, hey, why can't our food be like theirs? Why can't we get what we order? You know, when we read today's passage and we get to verse five, we're presented with this feeling that this isn't fair. This isn't, this is not just. I mean, Moses deserves to enter the promise. He worked so hard for so long. He put up with so much. No, this is not what he ordered. No, this is not what we ordered. This week, I was visiting with a few people about this text. And uh, someone asked me this question. How does Moses feel about this? Well, we look over the text and we don't get an indication of how he felt. So we just have to speculate. Maybe Moses is just as upset as us. Maybe he's disappointed, but he's resigned with the fact that this is God. Maybe he's thinking, you know, I'm 120 years old. I don't need another 40 year journey. This mere speculation. Or maybe, maybe we're looking at this passage. Maybe we're looking at this sermon series. Maybe we're looking at life. Um, I want to share something with you that I came across in the church. Uh, just give me one second. I gotta, I gotta get this. This was supposed to be a banner 
that was going to be hanging in our hallway. I'll hold it up so that you can see it a little bit better. At the first service today, I showed a banner that was going to be on our P Street uh, sign that we have. Uh, in addition to that banner, we have a wooden box that's down in our basement that we asked Bud Johnson to make for us. And it was made specifically for the Good Friday service. I'll tell you, all of these things, it was part of this grand plan that we had for Easter. Now the stuff, Churches, you remember, were, were empty for Easter. This is not what we ordered. What we got was some joint service where our 79 Methodist churches in the county worshiped together, and it definitely was not the same. I'll tell you a story. About four years ago, representatives from all of the United Methodist churches in our county got together for a meeting. And we were formulating kind of a, a cooperative parish. We had joint plans for worship, for youth group, uh, health ministries, uh, to streaming our worship services together, uh, really combining our limited resources. Now, eventually, those talks broke down. When about two or three of the churches just felt it wasn't in their best interest to, to be part of the plan. And, and four years ago, I'll tell you, I was really disappointed that we couldn't get all coming in. I was feeling um, this is not what I need. Interesting that it took a pandemic for all of this to happen. So let's go back to what Moses is doing. No, that, that, that really is the wrong question. This is not about Moses. Just like this pandemic is not about us. You see, when we look over at the other table, when we look over at the other church, when we look over at the other football team, what are we doing? Well, we're comparing ourselves to someone else. And when we begin to think, well, what about us? When will I get my promise? When will life get better for me? Is that pandemic thinking? Is that thinking consistent with the Bible? No. It's found with the Hebrew people. But that thinking is not of God. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him, and the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded. If we believe that our story ends with Deuteronomy, then we miss Joshua. Joshua, son of Nun. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun. Moses is assisting, saying, my servant, my servant is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I'm giving to them, the Israelites. If we believe that the journey of the Hebrew people ends with them entering the promised land, then we miss how difficult the next 1,300 years is going to be. If we believe that the Christian story ends with Jesus' death, then we miss the resurrection. If we believe that the unity, if I believe that the unity of those county United Methodist churches ended with that meeting four years ago, then I would have missed this year's Easter service where we all came. If we believe that our life is over because of the restrictions of the pandemic, uh, of what we missed out on, on, on what others are doing, then we are missing on what we are seeing. Last week, I shared with the church council that in this pandemic, pastors are leaving their pulpits. That Zoom call uh, with his colleagues from Colorado, already one of them is planning on retirement. Another is planning on leaving her congregation to go back to Haiti. If that was my thinking, if I believe that this is not what I ordered, then I'd be missing out on what this church, on what God is doing right here, on what we are becoming. So we could stop right here 
And in our journey with verse 5, Moses dies. Or we can pivot. Now, there's a word that we've heard. And we can see the potential and realize that the journey really continues with Joshua. It continues with the prophets of Israel. It continues with Jesus. It continues with those Sunday school teachers that taught you as a child. It continues with you today. There is no end. It's just the next step. Now, to the half of you that uh, have received retirement, does that mean that your work week is over? How many of you are now working more than when you were full-time? And to the half of you that have a child, does that mean that once you gave birth, that you stopped being a mom? There is no end. It's just the next step. This may not be what you ordered, but at least you got something from the kitchen. There's a story about two men that were seriously ill, and they occupied the same hospital. One was allowed to sit up for about an hour in his bed, and his bed was right next to him. The other had to stay flat on his back. And these two became good friends. They would talk for hours. They spoke to family, jobs, and community. And every afternoon, the man who was by the window, he would describe for the other one what he would see out there. And the man on, that was flat, just a lot long for these descriptions. The window would overlook this park with a lovely lake with ducks and swans. Uh, he could see children playing with model boats and young lovers walking arm in arm and had these grand old trees. And, and off in the distance, you could see the, the beautiful skyline of the city. And the man would describe all of this in detail. The other would, would just kind of close his eyes and, and, and just imagine. Well, there was one warm afternoon where the man by the window described a parade that was going on. And although the other man who was flat on his back could not hear it, he could see it all in his mind's eye. One morning, the, the nurse came in, found the man by the window who passed away. In the hospital attendants had come in to take him away. And after a day or two, the other man asked if he could be moved to the other bed. The nurse was happy to do it. And once he was comfortable, he was left alone. And slowly, painfully, he propped himself up by the elbow to take a look at this descriptive window outside. And as he looked, he was shocked to find that it faced a brick wall. And he called on the nurse and, and he asked, what would compel his now deceased roommate to describe all these wonderful things? And the nurse said, well, I don't know. Your roommate was blind. He couldn't even see the wall. Perhaps, she said, he just wanted to encourage you. You know, the, the journey through the wilderness has been awful on so many. We have read and witnessed some of the worst and most selfish behavior found in the Hebrew world. And yet, the Jewish people today and Christians look back at this story as a defining moment that God chose to become Israel. And in the process, become a child, a child of God. You know, God encouraged them every step. God gave them the Ten Commandments and about a hundred more. Uh, God raised up people to continually look back at this time and say, we are a living example of what God wants. Was it what those Hebrew people ordered? They left Egypt? I don't think so. But we got so much more. Our pandemic is not over, but God is still encouraging us to become so much more. So, Get ready for the next step. We uh, come to our uh, prayer of Thanksgiving and just remind all of you that uh, um, there are ways that you can continue to support the ministry of the church. Next week, you're going to be hearing about our mission uh, moment that we have for the month of September. Um, we do have opportunity to do use the online giving portion of our church's website is click on give uh give now 
Um, you can also mail your checks to the church, 900 O Street. And uh, if you are in church in person, uh, we do have a lock box. Or you can use. Uh, but let us just pause now for our prayer of Thanksgiving. Let us pray. Uh, dear Lord, there is, uh, um, there is a lot that we did not order. Uh, we cannot golf. We cannot see our family. We cannot have those celebrations. Um, we are restricted in so many things that we can do. We, we, we don't like this. We, we, we want to come back to church and, and not have it full of tape. And, and we want to have Sunday school and we want to have all of these things. Scott, it, it is really hard to see the blessing. Dear Lord, they are there. Kind of like that Happy Meal. It's not what I ordered, but there's money in it. Uh, maybe it's uh, maybe it's a word of encouragement. Um, maybe it's something that, that has just really touched us in such a wonderful way. Thank you so much for these blessings. Many more. And I just ask that you gather us all in as we uh, pray, we become your people. Your name. We come to our uh, time of communion. And uh, I uh, remind you that to have the elements available. And uh, I'm going to share the screen here in just a second so that we can have the words available for you. Right screen. There we go. So um, I'll be saying the words in blue, and um, after I say the words in blue, I ask you to say the words. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, our Alpha and our Omega, whose strong and loving arms encompass the universe. For with your eternal word and Holy Spirit, you are forever one God. Through your word, you created all things and called them good. And in you, we live and move and have our being. When we fell into sin, you did not desert us. You made covenant with your people Israel and spoke through prophets and teachers. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt in full of grace and truth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their identity. Holy are you and blessed is Jesus Christ who called you Abba, Father. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own and filled them with longing for peace and for justice that would never fail. In Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed the power for their power forever. You raised from the dead the same Jesus who now reigns with you in glory and poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. The night before... On the night before meeting with death, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples and said, take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it members of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread. And in the breaking of this bread and the drinking of this wine, we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ in the world, redeemed by Christ's blood. As the grain and grapes once dispersed in the fields are now united on this table in bread and wine, 
them may we and all your people be gathered from every time and place into the unity of your eternal household and feast at your table. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Body of Christ. Broken for you. Blood of Christ. Shed for you. you may you may now partake. And for those of you that have pets with you, make sure that you feed a little bit of the, to the puppy. Let us have our benediction. Um, and before, uh, remind you that uh, um, next week we will continue to have this Zoom service here at 1030. And uh, um, we'll see you next week. But let us have our benediction now. Gracious God, um, there is so much that we didn't. Uh, the snow and, and cold weather that we're going to have this week, uh, the, the lack of a football season, the uh, things that just are not going our way. Um, gracious God, this is not what we expected. Um, but thank you so much for the institution of bread in this cup. It gets us through one more day. Um, we get something from the kitchen. Wow. Gracious God, allow us to see these blessings. And for the Holy Spirit that's going to wash over us, and, and we're going to feel that in the breeze here this week, we just ask that you fill us with your spirit. In your name we pray. Thank you so much for joining us with worship. And uh, until next week, until, um, uh, until we meet again.